Oh my God, you were so good. I really liked what you did. I mean, uh, well, I mean, I really waited for you to come on stage. Every time you came on stage, it was really good. Uh, so, uh, do you? I mean, uh, are you part of a group? Uh, no, not really. I, um, I act on the side actually. Oh, okay, really? That's interesting. What are the other things that you do? What, what do you do otherwise? Uh, I'm a doctor. <coughs> what? Oh, wow. I mean, really? I mean, don't you guys like work all the time? You're here. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I do this on the side. And that's basically what happens every time I finish a play. And I come out and everyone's like, wow. And then I tell them that, you know, this is what I do. And everyone's like, wow, okay, you, you, you are a doctor. And that's really interesting, wow, okay. So um, this moment is when I think that, you know, when I was asked to give you a TED talk, I thought about what is it that I can actually talk to people about? I thought about what, what is it that you know makes me different or special. I'm like, I'm not famous. I haven't formed a company. I haven't, you know, it's not like when I walk around like, oh my God, that's Aaron. Did you see him? It's not like you guys went like, oh, that's Aaron, that's Aaron. Oh, I'm so glad I'm in this hall with him. I'm, I'm literally just a guy who does one thing, and that's that I do two things. I do two things all the time because I really, really, really want to. And my two things, I think, is the, the point of my TED Talk. And that is the point of what I'm trying to tell you guys, that you know, I don't walk around going like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm somebody. I, I'm as good as the show that I do. I'm really famous within this room. And when I walk out, I'm, I'm a nobody. And that's, that's what makes me special. You know, I, I'm in this place, and I'm good. And I walk out, and I'm nobody. So the two things that I really like doing is I act. I've done around a lot of productions and I help people. I mean, I, I, I teach children, I, uh, I've also directed plays and I've done a lot of these things. And along with this, I've done medicine. I've studied a whole bunch of interesting subjects and all the time I'm doing both of these things together. And so yeah, medicine has a lot of subjects. It's got a lot of things to do. And you know, um, it makes me wonder sometimes that you know, how do I do it? How do I do it? And that's what I'm gonna talk to you about. So I very humbly laid my talk, A Nobody's Guide to Life. And well, I really don't know too much about life. I can't really talk too much about it so far, well, because I'm just 23 years old and I really can't be telling you too much about life. Uh, so my life so far is just a, com a couple of things that I want to share with you about things that I've done consistently for the past few years. And it's been working for me and also because these are things that, these are ideas that I really like to share with you because these are, these are thoughts that I have acquired over the many years that I've been doing what I do. So I just want to share a couple of thoughts about that. Every time I finish a play, all they ask me is, how? That's the first question. How are you here and there at the same time? And I tell them, you know. So I'm going to tell you also. What I first do is, when somebody tells me, hey, I'd like, to be, I'd like you to be in a play, the first thing I tell them is, when is this play? And then I go back and check, do I have an exam on that day? No? Yes. Okay, good. Because the principle that I follow is that, you know, you can't be at two places at once. So the first thing I do is like, I make sure I don't have an exam because that's my priority. I make sure I do that. And then I go ahead and do this on the side. So I have had days in medicine where basically I've had long work hours. I spend uh, from eight to five the next day because I probably had duty. And then after that, I leave and I go for my rehearsals. And then I come back, come back home to sleep and then come back the next day to work. And I stay there till the next day, the, the, the one after that till 5 p.m. the next day. So that's basically how I do it. I spend all my time wondering and thinking about how I'm going to make sure that my day doesn't coincide with something else that I have to be spending time with. And then everything around that works with my rehearsals and everything. So it goes with, thank you, time. Everyone tells me, you know, like, you know, after play, you know, like, yeah, you know, I wish that I could also do all these things where I really don't have the time. And I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you probably don't have too much time. And you know how people always tell you when you don't assign, I mean, when you don't finish an assignment or when, you, when, you, uh, when you're not doing your work properly, they come to you like, you should have managed your time properly. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm so annoyed by those statements. And like, oh, or you mean like, you know, if there was a will, you found a way. Uh, <laughs> And these things always made me go like, why? I'm like, I'm sure I had a will or a way or I wish I had the time and all that. And I was always told these things. It's not like I'm not going to come and tell you it's all about time management because I never set out to do 
this time management thing. I never sat and planned about it. And it's just that over the years when I told people like, hey, I do this and I'm a doctor, people are like, hey, you must manage your time really well. Like, oh, yeah, I, I may be managing my time really well. So I sat back and I thought about it. Like, am I actually thinking and like, you know, making time for things and am I planning it that way? And I found out that well, subconsciously I have been finding, I mean, I have had, had uh, I have had, had a will and I found a way. So uh, what I found out is that Time for us, I mean, basically, let's just say college students and uh, people who are at this phase of, my, well, phase of life, which is my phase of life, you know, just in college and going out, you basically have around three segments in a day. The middle segment will be college. You better go. Go to college. Right? Go, don't, don't not go to college and everything. And I make sure I go. I go all the time. I, I tell people, like, you know, from this time to this time, I'm in college and I will not do anything between that. But you have a segment before and you have a segment after. I have college from eight to almost four, sometimes eight to eight the next day, and I make sure I do it. So you've got time before, you've got time after. It's about, you can easily put in the time before or after. So I tell people like, you know, I probably have work from eight to 8 p.m. and I'll come in afterwards, I have no problem. So I get out of the hospital, I jump in my car, I throw my steth and lab coat in the back. Sometimes I change into costume for a shoot or something, and I go back and I go. I'm, I have the will to go and say that, you know what, I, I don't want to go home and rest. I want to go and go do this. And I tell them, as long as it doesn't coincide with, you know, my timings at work, I'll be there till the, the, the 13th hour until which I have to go back to work. And I'll be there. I have no problems. So that's probably how I manage time. And probably I hope that, you know, that helps you think about this a little bit. The edge. Now, this entire thing, I mean, to some people seems like a headache. I'm like, why would you? I'm like, why can't you just go home, rest, study, come back the next day, and then like finish? I mean, and be a doctor. I mean, it's good. You're a doctor. Like, wow. Everyone's like, whoa. You, you. But I've realized that over the course of time, that the many years that I've been acting and everything, it's just that that acting has helped me as a doctor as well. And there, are, I mean, it's not like you can't go like, oh, because he's an actor, he's done this. Because he's an actor, he's also done this as a doctor. But a very, maybe, you know, in a way that you can say soft skills. It's helped me in different ways. I'm going to give you examples. And, uh, well, let's just say one, a woman in labor. Okay, and it's not just something that, I'm, I'm actually going to show you. A woman in labor is always like, ayo, ayo, and constantly whining. She's in so much pain all the time. Uh, ladies, yeah, I know, it's, it's really bad. It sometimes it can go really bad. And, you know, and what they do is, I mean, as a doctor, when you go in and help them, uh, you go like, ma'am, are you okay? And then she hold on to you and then push her nails into your skin, like, ah, it hurts, it hurts. And you're digging, and she's digging into your skin and assaulting you almost, and you can't really say anything. I mean, she's in pain. And uh, in this moment, I once had to like uh, strap two monitors around her abdomen and everything, and I, I did that. And while I was gonna go away, I got myself stuck in between both these monitors that I put her. So I was like, oh, pff, oh, I just did that, and I did something. I don't know what I did, and she just started laughing. Uh, I mean, in the middle of all her pain, she just started laughing. And I was like, wow, okay. I'm like, I mean, you're not feeling pain now? I'm like, why, why were you whining all this time if you can manage? <laughs> so, I mean, in, so as a doctor, to be able to alleviate pain in any way is such a wonderful thing to do because that's, that's something you should be able to do. And me, because I'm an actor, I think very naturally I'm like, oh, crap. And then I, and she just saw that and then she's like, hey. Oh, and th she just laughed, and I laughed, and then we just had like a little moment, and then her next labor pain came, and then, ah, and all that happened. So like, I'm like, I'm like, guys, I made her laugh. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah. So that happened, and then um, it doesn't always have to be laughing also, because, it can, because acting always has lines and line delivery, and that's helped me probably appreciate the way people say things and the way people talk. I will give you another instance where, you know, um, a woman had just been admitted, I mean, uh, not a woman, uh, a baby had been admitted to the hospital uh, and we had to go after, uh, after the hospital hours and then go and like speak to them and make sure who they are, talk to them and everything. And I had a friend who was doing that with me. So she went and spoke to the, the lady and it didn't look like the lady was the mother of the child. So uh, she went and told her like, you know, uh, where, where's the mother? And she said, uh, she's not here. And she, uh, my, my friend was like, how can she not be here? The mother of the child has to be the father. You have so many things to sign. How can you know? Who, who are you? I'm the grandmother. But, you know, something seemed different. The way she said the mother is not here made me realize that she was saying that 
she is the only one. So I, I, I got it. I got it the first time she said it. And I was like, I was trying, I was like nudging my friend, like, don't, don't. Like, no, come on, like, no, she, she, she's the only one. She, that's what she's saying. And it, it went into this back and forth of like, where is she? A questioning sort of method where you're like, you know, I need the parents here. And then she finally said it, like, you know, the parents are not here. I am the only one. And then she got it and then she's like, oh. I think I, as a person, I mean, maybe because I've been acting, because I, I, I sensed it. And I think to be able to be sympathetic that way, it, it helps being a doctor. I mean, it helps me because I'm an actor, and I think that gives me an edge. Well, otherwise, you know, I entertain kids who are in pain. Well, they're sitting there and they're crying for their mommy, and I'm just like juggling or teaching them things or showing them stories. It helps, and that's always been giving me an edge, I feel. And now, along with this, I'd like to talk to you about another concept that I think makes sense in this situation. This is something that I studied in uh, school. I mean, not school, college. Locard's exchange principle. It's basically something that you study in forensic medicine. And it means basically that every contact leaves a trace. And this was used in, uh, let's just say, crime scene investigations and stuff where you determine that a person has been somewhere because there's a part of that person in a place and the place has left something on the person. So, for example, I am here. Something from my boot will fall on this red carpet, and a little strand of red carpet will fall onto my shoe. Hence, you can establish that when I leave this place, we've both been here. So that's a very important way of linking two different people together. And that means that you did it, you were the one, you're going to jail. And basically, that's the implication of all of that. So now I want to change that around and try to say that every hobby that you pick up, from, in my case, it's acting. In your case, it could be something that you did a long time ago, dance, it could be writing, it could be anything. You leave a trace on your hobby, and the hobby leaves a trace on you. So this was everything that I did. This is how acting left a trace or left a mark on my doctor, doctor who, doctorship, whatever that I've been doing all this time. Because I was able to make people laugh, I was able to detect things, I was able to be a better doctor in some respects because I've been acting. That's what it's left off on me. And now, on the other instance, even like, you know, let's just say, I mean, why think acting? Think about the way, I mean, a dancer. The way a dancer even moves, her stride, her, the way they say things, move, or I mean, give things, it's going to be so much more different than a person who's just like not, never done it before. The guy who's going like this, probably just give you something. You take notice. You, you appreciate things. You, you probably stand out. You make a, a slight difference in what you do. The fact that I brought this slide here, that I've put, applied something that I learned in forensic medicine, and I brought it down to uh, making people understand that a hobby also does the same thing, embodies the very fact that I have also taken something from medicine and I've brought it here. And medicine has given me something and left it on me. And I think, just as any crime, my hobby has also done this to me. Now, I'm going to give you a very, um, um, a very nice example for me. I, we once traveled to Goa to have a show. And uh, we were performing uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And I was playing Puck, the fairy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys read Shakespeare, that's good. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, I played part. Except this is not just that. We, uh, we did Dr. Seuss's version of Shakespeare in play. So we were like dressed up crazy and all, you know, we had all the bling on and everything. And it was a really big show. It was a nice show. And we went to go out to perform one show and everyone's ready. The curtains are closed. We're waiting. And the first actor is waiting here to say his first lines as the curtain opens. And just before we start, there's an announcement there that says, ladies and gentlemen, is there a doctor in the house? And everyone's like, whoa, 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 why didn't the play start? And then we hear that somebody in the audience had a heart attack, an old man had a heart attack, okay? And uh, all these guys, my, my cast and crew, they all started looking at me. They're like, go do something. I was like, are you crazy? Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I mean, this person's going to believe that if he's already crossed over to the other side, if I go and help and like, do something for him, like, are you guys sure you really want me to go? And they're like, hey, I mean, like, nobody else is here. So we waited for like exactly a minute to see if somebody else would attend to this patient. And if not, I would be running in with sparkles in my hair and go like, <laughs> I'm ready to help you. <laughs> believe it or not, I'm a doctor. But at that moment, it really cemented the entire thing for me. I was just like, I'm standing here. I'm an actor. 
and I'm being called to be a doctor. At that very moment, I was both. And I loved it, and I thought I got a kick from it. I was like, yeah, this, why can't you do both? Why can't you do both at the same time? It made me feel like, you know, it's possible. I did it. I've been doing it. And now I've been called to do both. So this is also medicine's way of rubbing itself onto my acting, never letting me actually go and just be an actor. Just last week, I was hosting a show. In the middle of it, a baby, I mean, not a baby, a kid fainted. I ran. I went to help. The show stopped for a while. And I love it. I love being called to be a doctor when I'm an actor. And when in medicine also, there are times that I'm, as a doctor, called to be an actor because there are patients, I mean, we need patient simulations. So, I, I, you know, everyone's like, oh, pick Alan, pick Alan, he, he, he's a good actor. He'll, pre, you know, he'll pretend to be in pain a lot. I mean, he'll always do it. So I've always been called to train other doctors, and I'm, you know, I'm the patient. I'm just like, oh, it really hurts. I just went into uh, an accident, and, and I, I really play the part. So there, again, you know, it's just, it all mixes up. And I, that's what makes me go, like, why shouldn't you do both? Why can't you do both? Every time after a play, people ask me, so uh, are you going to be an actor full time or do you want to do doctor full time? I mean, like, both are really hard. Uh, I'm just like, no, I mean, I, I want to do both. And I've been doing both. I mean, so far, so far, so good. Like, it, it's been working. <laughs> the Multi Potential Life video by Emily Wap Wapnik. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, so it, it's gone up pretty viral. And I've realized that everything I've been doing, maybe leading towards, I mean, I believe in whatever she says, and I think that, you know, what she said has had an impact on what I do, and also, like, rather, like, you know, makes me reflect on everything that she's done, and say, I'm not going to go ahead and call myself a multi-potentialite yet, but what I'm trying to make you understand is that this is the time when you're just about leaving school, going to college, and you're like, hey, when I was in school, I used to act, I used to do elocutions, and now I'm in college, I'm engineering, my dad says, you have to study or my parents say I have to study, or doctor, my God, I mean, go to the library, sit there all the time, study. It doesn't have to be. And if this, at this point, at this juncture, if you decide that I will still continue on doing both, you may be on the road to be a multi-potentialite. So this could be it. I mean, this is that time that you're probably going to decide. If you've decided, no, you know, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be an engineer, you're going to be a writer, which is not bad, it's good. But why are you stopping yourself from doing something else and becoming more and becoming and letting something else rub off onto your career? Why are you stopping yourself? If I've had so much to do in medicine and I still manage to do both, I'm sure any other field also possibly can. So that's what I really wanted to tell you about this multi-potential I video because that really made a, a, an impact on me. And the other video is the 20 hours video by Josh Coffin. So now let's just say you've been in college two years ahead and you used to say back in the day when I was in school, I used to act. Now it's too late, I've lost touch. Or I really wanted to do this, but now I'm, in, I'm an engineer or a doctor and I can't, I don't have time. Let's go with the three segment thing that I said, that before and after, and let's go with Josh Kaufman's 20 hours. If you wake up one hour earlier and you spend an hour later, you've got two hours a day, and in 10 days, you've spent 20 hours, and according to Josh Kaufman, you can pick up a skill in 20 hours. So go back. Go back and do that thing that you wanted to do. Why can't you? you he's saying it's possible. I'm telling you which time of day that you can use. Go ahead and do it. I'm now learning, I'm sort of learning, how to uh, make uh, balloon uh, animals now. Uh, because I think it'd be very useful in the ICU because these kids are always so bored and I just want to go and like, look what I do and give them something to play with. I've spent 10 minutes watching a video so far. That's how much I've put in and I've got 19 hours and 50 minutes left to maybe get this skill right. But I'm doing it because I really want to pick up something new too. And that's, you guys should also because you don't have to say like, I'm busy all the time and go ahead and say like, you know, that's it, this is it. My life is going to be work and come back, do this, come back, rest, come back. It does not have to be. I've spent 10 minutes for my new skill so far. And maybe even if it has to take a year, I will give in my 20 hours for that skill. And I believe in it. I think it's possible. Everything that I do, I mean, it, it looks very flowery and everything, but you know, it's got a flip side. It's not, it doesn't always look really, you know, great. It's not easy to do both. I've told you that, you know, I have time to 
give for acting, I've got time to give for um, being a doctor, and it doesn't always coincide. Sometimes it doesn't, and it's, it's not easy. There are times that, you know, my parents and family go out for different occasions, and I mean, we're a family of five. There are four people in it, and generally we take turns and we take a picture and then go back, and maybe there'll always be four. But then, in this case, it's not me who's taking the picture of four. It's a tripod that was put on, and then they took a picture of four. And it's like, yeah, I, I wasn't there. OK. But, but that also requires something else, support. It's not easy to go ahead with two lives, go ahead, come back. My parents say, hey, uh, yeah, no, I understand that you come back home late. Good, OK, but at least you're doing something. They wake me up in the morning and talk to me about my day. My friends understand. My teachers tell me, go ahead, do it. It's really cool. Keep doing it. There are also people who say, like, you have to choose. How can you do both? Hmm. Uh, but it, it helps me. And then eventually I show them, and they're like, hey, that's pretty cool. That's really nice. So with support is very important. And I think the reason I'm standing here being able to do all of this is because right now somebody is covering for me in the hospital because they understand that I have to do this. So I'm thankful for everyone who supported me. And I think you also need to get a good support system going on. And in the end, what next? What next for me? What next for you? Uh, yeah, um, so what next for me is like, I don't know, I'm going to choose. I would probably decide between the two things one day. Maybe, you know, a movie that I was supposed to be in, the poster came out two days ago. It hurt a little bit, but it's okay. I chose to do, you know, this. I chose to finish my education and, and, and then go ahead with this. Maybe one day I'll choose the other, and that's fine. So that's for me. What next for you? Go ahead and pick up that hobby that you had, that thing that you wanted to do all the time. Go ahead and do it. I've told you how to do it. I'm not telling you manage your time, you will do it, go ahead and do it. I'm telling you how to do it. I'm showing you the way. So go ahead, pick it up, and try doing it now. That's, how, that's what I hope that you guys learn or got from this entire talk. And in the end, fun to do the impossible. It's really fun. If can, people go like, oh my god, doctor and actor, wow. And somebody told me, like, you know, this saying reminded me of you. So I thought I wanted to share this with you. Walt, Walt Disney said this. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. So go ahead, do the impossible. Thank you.